Hey guys, it's Andrew, and it's time to build another ECMAScript 7 decorator. This time, we're going to think about permissions. Let's say we have a names object here, which allows us to get an array of names. We can add names to that list, and we can also remove names from that list. And you can see I've got a couple of these operations being performed here. And if we go ahead and run this, you can see that we start with an empty list. We can add John, we can add Doe, we can remove Doe, and we just have John. And basically, we have permission to do all these things. But you can imagine this might be a backend API on a server or something, and you want a very simple way to control who has has access to given functions. Maybe if the currently logged in user does not have access to certain things, we just want to throw an error or return null. So let's see if we can create a decorator to manage permissions. Let's start by creating a user here. And of course, depending on how your user authentication system works, you may have like a request.user object or something like that. In our case, we've just got a constant called user, and this user has an array of permissions. And this user is allowed to read, and they are allowed to create, we'll say, but they cannot delete. They can't call our remove function. And now we want to build our actual decorator. So we're going to call this decorator can. This decorator is going to be a little bit different because actually our can function is not the decorator. Instead, can is going to return a function that takes the target, the key, and the descriptor. This is a little bit different from what we did last time where we just wrote our decorator directly. Instead, we have a function that returns a decorator. What this means is we're creating a custom decorator based on something that we pass to can. So in our case, that's going to be a specific permission. And so the reason for this is, let's look at this get function down here. If we want to apply our can decorator here, we can apply it in this way. We can say can read. And so then we're basically creating a customized decorator that specifically looks for the read permission. For add here, we're gonna have can create. And then for remove, can delete. This way we can customize how each one of our decorators works. So let's see, what do we need to do in here? Well, in here, let's use an if statement, and we can get a reference to our user by just calling the user directly. So let's say uh, user.permissions.includes the permission that was passed in. And this, of course, will return a Boolean value. If this is true, we know that the user is allowed to use the function as it is, so we can just return the descriptor without changing anything. However, if it's false, they shouldn't be allowed to access the function. So what we can do is say descriptor.value and this is going to equal a new function. And this new function could console.error. We could say you do not have, and then we'll pass in that permission name, permission. And then of course we have to return our new descriptor. All right, so let's see what happens here. This should work now if we go ahead and run it. Notice that we start by getting our empty list. We can add John to the list. We can add Doe to the list. But when it comes to deleting, we do not have permission to delete. So you do not have delete permission. Now, of course, this is a very good starting point. But the problem with this decorator is that if somehow the user's permission changes or the user themselves changes, uh, we don't actually update here. So perhaps instead of checking only once when the function is initially created in this object, we should check every time the function is called to see if the currently logged in user has that permission. In fact, we can show this in action if down here we go user dot permissions dot push and I push in delete permission after we have created the delete function. If we run this now, you can see that we still get that error. So our goal should be to have this work when we push and delete afterwards. So let's see how we need to change this. Basically, what we need to do is run this if statement inside of the function. So in here, let's grab the original function. So we can say descriptor dot value, and we'll bind that to the target just in case we have this inside that function. And then we can say descriptor dot value is going to be a new function. Let's use the rest parameter to collect the arguments. And then let's grab our if statement here and I'm gonna put that in here and we can say, uh, let's actually negate this. Let's say if the user does not have permission, then we're gonna return console.error and we'll just send that error. Otherwise, what we can do is just call a ridge function and of course, let's spread the arguments back in. All right, so that is our new descriptor and to be honest, I think it looks a little bit cleaner. We can't forget to return that descriptor and then let's get rid of all this extra code. So let's review this just to make sure we've got everything right here. First, we capture the original function and then we replace it with a new function 
that checks to see if the permission does not exist, we'll throw the error. Otherwise, we can just call the original function and return that value. Great, this should work. So now the only thing that should be different this time when we call this is that because we've pushed delete in after the function was created, the user should now be able to call delete. So let's go ahead and run this. And there you go. Look at that. It's working just fine. We can add John, we can add Doe, and then we can remove John. So there you go. Another simple decorator that is really useful, the can decorator.